Hey guys, Spencer here, and today I'll be showing you how to get the most out of your torpedoes by manually firing them instead of spamming them on auto fire. Before we get started, a few months back I had made a comment that manual fire was not necessary to do well, and that is still very true. Auto fire torps will still be very effective and capable of doing magnitudes more than any content this game has requires. But if you're a min-max player looking to get the most out of your torpedoes, then you really need to consider manually firing them as the benefits, especially as you approach those min-max levels of DPS, are really significant. And I must also thank Tenor for helping me figure out how to effectively make manual fire work. The approach I had tried earlier this year and showed on the Delkina video just did not work out that great. But the method I'll be going over here today is heavily based on how he approaches manual fire, and as you could see on the DPS tables, it's working pretty well for him and for most of the other people that are now manually firing near the top end of the table. Now, let's dive in and answer a question many of you may have. Why would you want to manually fire your torps instead of auto-firing them? The answer is simple. Manual fire keybinds like this will allow for you to have much more control over which torp is being fired out with the high yield or, or torp spread. If you're running a meta setup, then you should know quite well that some torps will perform better under a high yield and others under spread. Which is why there is such an issue with auto fire, because you lose the ability to control which torps are taking the spreads and which are taking the high yields. In addition, another benefit to manual fire is having the ability to choose if you're going to be launching an AoE focused high yield with the EBM, which is great for hitting a single target that has a bunch of stuff grouped up on it, like a gateway that's got a bunch of spheres grab weld to it. You would want to be gr you would want to hit that with as many EBMs as you possibly can up until the point the spheres are all dead. Once you're down to just one target, though, the Delphic really starts to come in as being a superior torp to just slam into that single target. So with these manual fire keybinds, especially the ones that I'll be going over here in just a minute or so, you have the ability to control if you're firing a high yield EBM or a high yield Delphic. Now, with all that being said, you know, I, I think it's time we just dive into the, the keybinds. We're three minutes into the video. Let, let's dive in. So I'm going to start up my OBS, record my screen here. And I've got this nice, lovely picture I put together blowing up my tray and just explaining what the various keys I have bound do. So some people will want to use different keys. And if you want to change it up, I will be including both just a text file if you want to just load the keybind into the game. And I'll also include the STO keybinds tool file for those of you that want to go in and change the keys and maybe add some other things into these, uh, these keybinds. So starting from the top here, let's look at key F. Key F I have labeled as being my high yield keybind that prioritizes firing the enhanced biomolecular torpedo. So in STO keybinds, it's set up to execute the full tray of tray 10 going from left to right. Now, if I go back in game here quick, let's just uh, take a look at what tray 10 looks like. So first up in all of these trays you see is emergency powered engines then the Immolating Phaser Lance. That's important to keep up for Universal Designs, but that's not the topic for today. Then I've got my High Yield. I have my Mine Dispersal Pattern, because once I'm in combat, I'm going to be wanting to spam mines as much as possible. Then I have Chemosite, which, you know, is always pretty handy to have, especially on a Torp build. And then the first torpedo is the Enhanced Biomolecular then the Delphic, then the Neutronic, and then the Dark Matter. So going from left to right, this keybind is going to make sure that the Enhanced Biomolecular will fire first if it is available. But it will still fire other torpedoes if 
the EBM is not available to fire. And being able to constantly spam out torpedoes is a really big deal when it comes to uh, stuff really high end runs and wanting to get the most out of like concentrate firepower because concentrate firepower will keep giving you high yields, but you have to be hitting a target with torps in order to be getting the free high yields. So you know, even if the EVM isn't available, you still need to have a torp hitting a target as often as possible. If it's especially if it's marked by concentrate firepower. So the EBM is the priority. But the Delphic is the second best high yield torp that we have on this build, so it is the second choice. And then there's the Neutronic, which will do okay under high yield, but it's better under spread. And then the Dark Matter at last, which it's an okay torp, but you want the others to fire first if they're available. Moving down to the second uh, tray here, let me pull the picture back up. So that was on my F key, and I used WASD to turn my ship, and for me, hitting F is not really that hard. Neither is hitting G, V, or C. So th these are all keys that are comfort picks for me. You may want to tinker around and put other keys in, and that's fine. So key G is basically the same thing. It's going to execute all of tray 9 from left to right. The only difference here is that instead of the EBM being first, it's the Delphic. The Delphic and the EBM have swapped orders. So the Delphic, as I've mentioned now a few times, is better when you're trying to use high yields against a single target. In fact, let me just show that to you here quick. I'm going to hit my high yield here. Okay. Let's take a look at the EBM. The EBM is doing 48,587. So you've got that noted down, 48,587. Now let's take a look at the Delphic. The Delphic does 13,058.5 times 6. Keep in mind there's that times 6 at the end of it. So... I've already got this up on a calculator here. So here is the EBM. Its high yield is doing 48.6K, but it's got a lot of AOE damage that it does, which means it's really good when you're, as I said before, if you're shooting a gateway that has a bunch of spheres grouped up on it with a grab well or something you'd want to be using the EBM because it's got that AOE damage to it. Pull the calculator back up. But if you're going up against a single target, the Stealthic just, it's going to hit harder against that single target because you're looking at 48.6K from the EBM versus the 78.35K from the Delphic. You see the difference there? Like there, there's you want to very much have the ability to fire the Delphic off with the keybind for big targets that you really want to knock down faster because it's going to be doing a lot more than the Delphic is, or well, the Delphic is going to be doing a lot more than the e EBM is. I can't talk here. Okay, let's let's move on to the next set of uh, keys here. So V or C. I know some people are going to be like, why do you have two keys doing the exact same thing? And the the simple answer is they, they both execute tray eight, but they are there because if my if I don't hit them quite right, you know, I have two different keys doing the exact same thing and I'm going down a row on the keyboard. It just gives me the option to make sure I'm not making a mistake and hitting the wrong key because they're. Either way, both of those keys right under F are going to be giving me what I'm looking for. So that that's why it's like this. And for that tray, it is very similar to the prior ones, except that the first torpedo firing is the Neutronic. Then the second is the Dark Matter. 
then the Delphic, and the EBM is last because the EBM is the worst of these torpedoes to fire out under spread, which is why if you if you look at that, you understand how that's an issue then for auto fire builds because auto fire is going to be sending off a lot of these enhanced biomolecular torp spreads, which is just not optimal. Okay, let me drag the picture back over. So the space bar going down to tray five here. That's just a spam bar for, you know, things I like to keep up. So the photonic officer, a bunch of my uncon procs, uh, you know, go, go check out my video from yesterday if you don't know what unconventional systems is. And I'll just show this here. I know a lot of people really like to have fire all weapons on their space bar. If you're trying to do manual fire torps, don't do that. Don't put redistribute shields on here. Don't put fire all weapons. That's That would be a terrible thing to do when you're trying to manually control what torps are firing. Uh, if you put fire all weapons on here, you would be basically overriding what you're trying to do with the all of the keybinds. So just just don't do that. And now the last key here is my left control. And I basically, if I'm in combat, I hit this with my left pinky. So what this does is it fires all the mines. It's got a key bind, or like the, just this command here to fire all mines. And it's executing just a partial tray of tray four from slots seven through 10. And I use this for the start of runs. So if I want to just get mines out at the start of an infected run during prep phase, I just go and I hit my left control and it does that for me. Uh, I, I could use like any of the other keys, but the issue with that is I need to save like the emergency powered engines, the, the torps, uh, the high yields, the ETM proc here with the scatter volley, which gives me a torp spread. Uh, I need to keep those for later on in the prep phase so I have them timed better for that first group. But I think that that pretty much covers all of this here. So I, I think I've pretty much explained everything. Um, I'm sorry that I probably am not putting as much detail into some of this as I should be, but hopefully this, this is enough to cover things for most of you. If you have any questions or comments, as always, feel free to just leave a comment down below and I will get back to you as soon as possible. But hopefully this video helps some of you out. I know there's a lot of people wanting to get into manual fire with torps and hopefully this video helps you get started on that path. Um, the other thing is too, I, I, I'm realizing right now as I'm about to end this that somebody's going to be like, well, how do you, you know, uh, load this keybind into the game? And let me just get this up here. Uh, stow. So you'd want to go to your stow folder, wherever you have that. Go to Star Trek Online, live, and you would want to drop in the text file that I'm going to have linked down below. Uh, just just drop that into this stow folder here, just on this page that you see. And then you would go in game and you would type slash bind underscore load underscore file. Uh, let's just say manual torps dot text. You would just type that in in game once you've dropped the file there and that would just load it in for you. You do need to be in space, of course, when you enter the command. So once again, if you have any questions or comments, leave them down below. I'll get back to you as soon as I can. But thanks for stopping by, and I'll see you all next time.